In the last year of the World War, the Tumanian nation began to weaken. Behind her lines, revolution had broken out. Her diplomats were frantically suing for peace, while at the front, Tumania's army fought on, confident its war machine was invincible, confident its war machine would smash the enemy's lines. Big Bertha, a cannon that could hurl a projectile a hundred miles, was this day to make its first appearance on the Western Front, was this day to strike terror into the hearts of the enemy. Seventy-five miles away was her target, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Range! 95,452. Range, 95,452. Yes, sir. Range clear. Fire! Hey, stand by your trigger. Yes, sir. Range correction. 95,455. Range 95,455. Yes, sir. Breach secured. Time clear. Ready. Fire. Defective shell. We'll examine it. Come on. Come on. Come on. We'd better check the fuse. Yes, check the fuse. Yes, sir. The fuse. Soldiers, come on here, get your hand grenade. Hey, soldier, where's your hand grenade? Yeah. Hey, come here, where's your hand grenade? Me, get my hand grenade. Come on. Keep moving, come along. Move forward, hurry it up. Come along. Hurry up. Pardon me, sir, but uh, to work this, how do you... Pull up in, count ten, and throw it.
Captain. Capitan. There you are. Huh? Hmm? Oh, excuse me. The enemy! Come on, fellas, let's get him! Good afternoon, sir. May I come in? Who is it? Friend. Come in. What division? 21st Artillery, sir. Take this, hold them all, and keep firing. I'll be back in a moment. Yes, sir. I'm exhausted. Quick, help me to my plane. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Thank you, my lad. Steady. I'll see you get the Tomanian cross for this. That's all right, sir. Oh. I'm only too willing to oblige. Oh. You saved my life. Thank you. I'll strap you in. I'm weak. I can't make it alone. You'll have to stay with me. All right, sir. Can you fly a plane? I can try. Uh, oh! Quick, lift my hand to the stick. I haven't the strength. Uh. Take charge of that gun, Sergeant! Uh. The enemy! They're coming! Quick, lift my hand to the throttle. We'll <laughs> pull them! Dispatches. Yes, sir. If we can deliver them to General Smeloff, Ultimania may yet win the day. Ha ha! I think I'm going to faint. Oh, don't say that. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. Huh? I'm sorry. Oh, please. Hey, hey, mister. Hey! Where am I? Don't you know me? Oh, yes. Of course. Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I feel better now. Ah. The blood's returning to my head. What's below? Looks like the sun. The sun? Seems to be shining upwards. Strange. How's the gas? Terrible. It kept me awake all night. No, no, no. The gas leaned in the tank. Oh. Almost empty. We must be nearly there. What time is it? Time? About approximately one minute to twelve. <coughs> Strange. Strange. Look at that. seem to be defying the laws of gravity. Hmm. Uh, water! Huh? Quick, I'm going to faint. Now, wait a while. Now, wait a moment. Oh. You'll get, oh. we'll get into trouble if you faint, faint anymore, huh? Oh. Now, be careful. Oh. Here, now, just Quick. hold it. Hold it. Oh. Hold it. I think I oh. can. Now, we'll just faint. See. Water. Oh. Oh. Water. Oh. 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 Here, take it. Oh. Right. Something oh. wrong. Oh! Oh, I can't reach it. Oh, water. Strange. Oh. oh, it's all gone. What's the matter? This belt is too tight. We'll loosen it. I'm trying to. We're upside down. I know it. Give me that stick. Impossible. Oh, there it goes. We're out of gas. Well, I suppose this is the end. Cigarette? Not now. Then I shan't need this anymore. What month is it? April. Spring in Tomania. Hilda will be in the garden now, tending the daffodils. How she loves daffodils. She would never cut them for fear of hurting them. It was like taking a life to cut a daffodil. 
Sweet, gentle Hilda. A beautiful soul. And she loved animals. And little children, too. Oh! Oh! We've landed! Dispatches! Comrade, where are you? Comrade! Comrade, the dispatches! Tell me, where are they? Are you hurt? Quick, take me to General Schmeloffel. What's that? Hurry, man, if I don't deliver these dispatches at once, we're defeated. Well, the war's over. What? We lost. Lost! Oh! <laughs> Party takes power. Meanwhile, the Jewish soldier, ex-barber, veteran of the World War, suffered a loss of memory and remained an inmate of the soldier's hospital for many years. He was ignorant of the profound change that had come over Tomania. Hinko, the dictator, ruled the nation with an iron fist. Under the new emblem of the double cross, liberty was banished, free speech was suppressed, and only the voice of Hinko was heard. Hey, in the Blitzen sagt er, Lütz! Ey! Ich bleib noch straff mit der Ach! Ballone! Ballone, was ein Stritz mit seinen Eltern sagt er, Lütz! Ey! Der Straff mit seiner Klatsch! Ey! Der Straff mit seinen Gedanken da! Mit seiner Tratsch mit seinen Gedanken! Mein alter Täter, wie der Straffen! Die Straffen! Sie Straffen! Lloyd Hinkler has just said yesterday Tomania was down, but today she has risen. Democracy stunk. Democracy is fragrant. Liberty stunk. Liberty is odious. Free Sprechen stunk. Freedom of speech is objectionable. Tomania, with the Kreutzer army in the Welt. Tomania has the greatest army in the world. The Kreutzer navy in the Welt. The greatest navy in the world. Mit seiner Erde Kreutzer alles und einer zu sacrifice. But to remain great, we must sacrifice. Ah, alles und einer Strotten tighten the belt. We must tighten our belts. Heil Hinkel, ist man der Fürsten? Ah, Herring. Puppchen, Herring. Bismarck, Herring. The Fui now speaks to Field Marshal Herring, the Minister of War. Wir sind Ölten, sagt der Pilaten. Ah, von der Hafen sieht der Kellner Puppchen. Ein Herring. Ein Garbage. Herr Garbage, von seit Ölten. He is now addressing Herr Garbage, Minister of the Interior. Herring und Herr Garbage. Ah. Herring shouldn't smell and find from garbage, and garbage shouldn't smell and find from herring. <laughs> herring and garbage. His Excellency recalls the struggles of his early days shared by his two loyal comrades. Kessel und der Stritz. Elde Flüten sagt der Kühlten, Söhne weiner Hütten. Ein der Stritz mit seiner Kühlten sagt der Flirten. Ein sechs Stritzen sagt. Ein sechs Stritzen sagt. Ein sechs Stritzen sagt. Ein der Alter. <coughs> <coughs> you know, she will stretch me to the and sect. Ah, and the Aryan, and the Aryan maiden. Ah, the Aryan maiden. Ah, the delicatessen with the shirt. And the flaxen with the stresses. Ah, and the Ulstein with the moss. Ah, the moss for the kinder, cats and jammer. 
Der Katzenschirm mit der guten Sekte, guten Fäden, guten Fäden, Dotten, guten Sekte. Hey, Soldiers for Hinkel! Wir sehen, der Herrien und na, der Schuten. Der Schuten. Und der Stift, der Sauerkraut mit der Schuten. Und der Leberwurst mit der Schuten. Ey, der Flutzen sagt weiter mit der Schuten. Ey, der Flutzen sagt der Klärten. Und der Strengelächeln mit der Hulten sagt der Flärten. Und der Blätzen sagt der Helden. Besick, besack. His Excellency has just referred to the Jewish people. And now, Straf mit seinen Hüten sagt der Flair. Der Flair mit der Hüten sagt der Herden. Und Straf mit seiner Trotz Trotz. Eine Flüten. Der Herr Trotz einer nach Europe. Blitzkrieg, Fratsch, Fratsch mit den Kadetten, ein Feinholz traf mit seiner und den Franz, ein Feinholz ein Straf mit seiner Finnland und mein Holz ein Straf mit seiner Rutscher, weil es kreist an eine Ei, Ei, der Flutzen, Mieter, Hälz, der Straf, Ei, der stinkt einer, stunken, der stunken mit der Führung, ein stunken mit der Höll, ein Südhund der Klotzers mit seiner Tomelia. <lacht> In conclusion, the Fui remarks that for the rest of the world he has nothing but peace in his heart. pause for station identification. This is the Pari Mutual Network, bringing you direct from Tomania Adenoid Hinkle's address to the sons and daughters of the Double Cross. The English interpreter is Heinrich Stick, Adenoid Hinkle's personal translator, who is apparently reading from a prepared manuscript. Stand by for further commentary. Go ahead, Tomania. His Excellency is about to descend the stairs. Your Excellency! Oh, are you hurt? Oh, strap, strap! Fluten, blame on that cheese cracker. Oh, fluten, blame the banana. The fluten, the banana. The new fluten, the banana. The banana, the banana, the fluten, the strap, the banana, the fluten, the banana. The banana. The banana. The big boobin, the steak, and the strap, the banana. 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 The big boobin, the other fine, the cheese crackers, the fluten. Banana. You ride in the other car. His Excellency seems well pleased as he's greeted by a committee of Tomanian children and their mothers. Now he pauses before a woman with a child. Camera. Even the baby is thrilled and seems all smiles at His Excellency's attention. He won't let me. Every few weeks, he writes to say he's coming back. It seems a pity it should be idle all these years. Well, why worry? With the taxes, the government will soon take it away from him. I, perhaps you're right. It isn't such a good morning after all. Now you said it. Anna. Yes, Mr. Jago. On the mantelpiece, you'll find my tobacco pouch. Will you get it? All right, Mr. Jago. Yeah. Seems everyone is full of troubles. Huh? Everyone. Look at Hannah, poor girl. A hard worker can't get a job. Father was killed in the war. Mother died last year. Can't earn enough to pay the rent for her room. What can I do? 
I can't throw her out. You'll need some more tobacco. Where are you going? I'm delivering Mrs. Shoemaker's laundry. Oh, you better take the key. Mrs. Jekyll and myself are going out. I'm locking up all the doors in case the stormtroopers will start their monkey business again. That's all right. Just charge it to my account. Nice, right? Tomatoes, boys. Why don't some of you do something? I wish I was a man. I'd show you. Now, what would you do, my pretty maid? Oh, you're very brave altogether, but not one of you got guts to stand up alone and fight. Ah, oh, shut up. Is that way you got a truck to run away in case somebody hits your back? Shut up or we'll take it down. All right, come on and take me. You get a lot of medals for it. All you can do is to pick on women and rob defenseless people. Ah, oh, don't rob the poor girl, boys. Give her back her tomatoes. Here. Patient 33. Yes, sir. Here's an interesting case. Amnesia, Jewish soldier. Been here since the war. Has an idea he's been here only a few weeks. Has he any idea what's happened in the meantime? Not the least. His one interest seems to be in his barbershop, which he believes he left only a few weeks ago. Poor devil, he'll have many surprises waiting for him. I'm afraid so. Yeah? Number 33 is gone. Gone? But he was to be examined. I know, sir, but he disappeared. Disappeared? Well, let him go. It isn't a serious case. Besides, there's a little more we can do for him. What do you think you're doing? I really don't know. Well, you leave that alone. Don't be silly. I'm not silly. I appreciate that. When you talk to me, hail Hinkle and salute. 
Who are you, anyway? I'll show you who I am. Come down to headquarters. Say, that's my shop. I don't care if it is or not. Come down. You leave me alone. Oh, I'm going to put up a fight, are you? Come on down. I'll show you. Now, let me tell you something. You a policeman? Arrest that man for assault. Come here, you. Leave me alone. That pack and a storm. Get your own Take it down. Take it down, my lawyer. Come on. Leave me alone. Why, you? Oh! Get him around! Oh, 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 he bit my finger! Wonderful, I enjoyed that. But don't stand there, you better beat it. No, I'll call a policeman. No, no, don't do that. Why not? You crazy? Look out, there's more coming. More what? Wait a minute. Come in here. What's wrong with you? There's no use being foolhardy. I don't know. I think there were a gang of them. Well, here, you'd better go along. Get fixed up. We'll investigate later. What time is it? Come on, get in. I don't see what it is. It's all right now. They've gone. Thanks, mister. Ah, oh, that did me a lot of good. You sure got nerve the way you fought back. That's what we should all do, fight back. We can't fight alone, but we can lick them together. We didn't do so bad, did we? So long. Excuse me. You're the barber. The one that was in the hospital. Mr. Jacobs often talked about you. We didn't think you were ever coming back. Huh? But the stormtroopers, they'll be looking for you. Stormtroopers? You better hide. Wait, I'll get the key to the cellar. Is this the man? That's him. Hale Hinkle. Who's he? Don't fool with me, I said. Hail Hinkle. All right. Put out your hands. Just a moment. We won't put him on here. Bring him outside. Yes, come on, you. Come on. Before we take you down, you'll finish this. Here. Go on. Paint that. Hey, you! Oh. 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 Shoot! A tan's pun! Who 
first in command. Yes, sir. What the? Second in command. Yes, sir. Oh, never mind. You. Yes, sir. What the devil goes on here? And who told you to hang people from lampposts? No one, sir. My orders were to keep these streets tidy. What was the trouble? A Jew was attacking stormtroopers, sir. Where is he? There. Break ranks. Oh, so there you are. Stand him up. Get up. You. Don't you remember me? Huh? The war. You saved my life. Me? Strange. And I always thought of you as an Aryan. I'm a vegetarian. Well, don't you remember the enemy tried to capture us, but we got away in my plane. Plane? And then we crashed. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Well, how are you? What has my friend done? Our men were painting his windows, Commander, and he resisted. Any brave man would resist. I'm sorry this occurred. Oh, no oh, harm. I'm sure that in future you will not be molested again. However, if you or your friends are ever in any trouble, I hope you'll let me know. Who did that? Oh, one of my friends. Oh. Hinkle's palace was the center of a gigantic enterprise, an enterprise that would build the world's greatest war machine. Behind this undertaking was the dynamic energy of Adenoid Hinkle, whose amazing genius ran the entire nation, whose ceaseless activity kept him busily occupied every moment of the day. I believe we've got something now. A bulletproof uniform. Material as light as silk. Where is it? I've arranged for a demonstration in the ante room. It will only take two minutes. I can spare one. Professor Herr Kibbitson. Hail, Hinkle. Your Excellency. Actions speak louder than words. A bulletproof uniform. And 100% perfect. Far from perfect. My secretary, where is she? In the outer office, Your Excellency. Call her. Yes, sir. Hail, Hinkle. Take a letter. in the world, worn like an ordinary hat. It will open in 25 feet. Demonstrate, Professor.
¡Qué vinco! Herring, why do you waste my time like this? Send garbage here. Their garbage is waiting, Your Excellency. Enough. Hail, Hinko. Garbage. What's the meaning of this? These appropriations. 25 million for prison camps when we need every penny for the manufacturing and munitions. We've had to make a few arrests. A few? How many? Nothing astronomical. Five or ten thousand. Oh. A day. A day? Just a few dissenters, that's all. What do they dissent about? The working hours, the cut in wages. Chief to the synthetic food, the quality of the sawdust in the bread. What more do they want? It's from the finest lumber our mills can supply. Nevertheless, the condition is getting dangerous. The people are overworked. They need diversion. The people, bah. Uh... You might go a little further with the Jews. Burn down some of their houses. Spectacular assault on the ghetto now might prove diverting. We must do something more dramatic. Now is the time to invade Austerlitz. How soon can we be ready? According to Herring, three months. I can't wait that long. Besides, Napoleon's army might invade Austerlitz before me. We must strike now. In that case, we should require foreign capital. Borrow it, borrow it. The bankers have all refused. But wait, there's one man who might make us alone. Epstein. Epstein? He's a Jew, isn't he? Yes. Hmm. Well, let's be big about it. We'll borrow the money from Epstein. It might be difficult in view of our policy towards his people. Very well, then, we'll change our policy towards his people. Tell Commander Schultz that in future, all persecution of the Jews must cease, at least, till we've negotiated this loan. I don't understand it. The whole ghetto is so quiet now. You can't imagine what was going on while you were away. Ah, uh, this Hinkle business. You weren't here. You were in the hospital, unconscious. Believe me, you don't appreciate what a good time you were having. <laughs> well, if things get worse, we can go to Austerlitz. That's still a free country. Sooner or later, we'll have to go. Anyway, it's nice to see you back. It's like the old days again, eh? How's business? Very slow. Very slow. The trouble is the men are all in concentration camp. You should go in for fixing up the women. It's nice money in the beauty parlor business. You know anything about it? Huh? Me? No. Oh, you can learn. You could practice on Hannah. Yeah, of course. Hannah, get up in that chair. They are going to make you look beautiful. Beautiful? What for? He's going to practice on you for a beauty parlor. You're not going to put mud on my face, are you? Oh, you're going to take some off. Make me look beautiful. Sure. We can't make you look any worse. <laughs> oh. Anna! Oh, there's Mrs. Shoemaker for the laundry. That's all right. I'll give it to her. You sit here and enjoy yourself. What? I know. I've seen you making eyes. Don't pay any attention, Mr. Jago. <laughs> I like your shop since we fixed it up. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a business like this. There's no future in housework. Maybe if I save my money, I can have a barber shop someday. <laughs> but I can never save. Money slips through my fingers like that. Trouble is, I've always lived up to every penny I've earned. Why shouldn't I? You're here today and gone tomorrow, and then where are you? Do you believe in God? Well... I do. But if there wasn't one, would you live any different? I wouldn't. Life could be wonderful if people would leave you alone. Things are looking brighter now. Maybe you're the reason saving Commander Schultz's life. Funny how they've left us alone lately. Seems too good to be true. Do you have a daydream? I do. That's the only time I'm really happy. Dreaming. Sometimes I get so carried away, I don't know what I'm doing. Aren't you like that? 
you know we're very much alike. Are we? Yeah, we're both absent-minded. You think so? Yes. <laughs> I like absent-minded people. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do you know the story about the man that put his watch in boiling water and held the egg in his hand? No. <laughs> <laughs> they say all great men are absent-minded. It's a sign you're smart. <laughs> My folks didn't think so. Of course, there's an excuse for you. You're injured in the war. <laughs> I was born that way. Why women never grow whiskers? Mm hmm. What? Was... What? You... <laughs> oh, Isn't that foolish of me? I... I could kick myself in the shin. Oh. Back. I'll give you shampoo. <laughs> on yourself. Huh? If you were fixed up, you'd look handsome. Yeah? Yes. No. There's a potato man. I have to go. Potato! One, please. Take it easy there. Well, you hurt yourself? Careful next time. Here's another one. How do you do? Something's happened, I know it. The stormtroopers, they helped me up. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they stopped hating us? If they'd leave us alone and let us go about our business like we used to. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we didn't have to leave and go to another country? I don't want to go away. With all the hardship and the persecution, I love it here. Perhaps we don't have to go. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they'd let us live and be happy again? The Flüten. Period. Thank you, Shane. Not even a sharp pencil. I'm surrounded by nothing but incompetent, stupid, sterile stenographers. I'll get you a pen. Don't bother. I won't send it. Get out, get out, get out! We've just discovered the most wonderful, the most marvelous poison gas. <laughs> it will kill everybody. All right, later, later, later. B-76 to see Herr Herring. Who's that? A lady. My secret agent. Hmm. Your secret agent. Tell her to come here. Have B-76 come right in. Herr Hinkle. Oh, garbage. What do you hear from Epstein? Most encouraging. Our agent reports that all the board of directors are Aryans. So the loan is bound to go through. Good. Hail, Hinkle. Come here. Well? The men are planning a strike at the arms factory. Who's the leader? There were five of them. Captain shot. They were, Your Excellency. 
Oh. Hmm. How many do you say were going on strike? The whole factory. Three thousand of them. Have them all shut. I don't want any of my workers dissatisfied. But, Your Excellency, these men are skilled craftsmen. Why not let them work till we can train others, then shoot them? You cannot afford to be lenient. The whole rhythm of production will be affected if we shoot them now. Rhythm of production. All right, have your rhythms. You may instruct your operatives to spare the strikers and permit them to return to work, but to mark them for future reference. That is my department. I'll attend to that. This way. Strange. These strike leaders, they're all brunettes. Not a blonde amongst them. Brunettes are troublemakers. They're worse than the Jews. Then wipe them out. Too small. Not so fast. We get rid of the Jews first, then concentrate on the brunettes. We shall never have peace until we have a pure Aryan race. How wonderful. Tomania, a nation of blue-eyed blondes. Why not a blonde Europe, a blonde Asia, a blonde America? Blonde world. And a brunette dictator. Dictator of the world. Why not? Art Caesar, Art Nullus. The world is effete, worn out, afraid. No nation would dare to oppose you. Dictator of the world. It's your destiny. We'll kill off the Jews, wipe out the brunettes. Then will come forth our dream, a pure Aryan race. Beautiful blonde Aryan. They will love you, they will adore you. They will worship you as a god. <gasps> no, no, you mustn't say it. You make me afraid of myself. Yes, dictator of the world. We'll start with the invasion of Austerlich. After that, we won't have to fight, we can bluff. Nation after nation will capitulate. Within two years, the world will be under your thumb. Believe me. I want to be alone. Caesar of Nolus, Emperor of the world. Happy Hour program. Make your work a pleasure. Move with the rhythm of music. Our next selection, Brahms Hungarian Dance Number no. 5.
15 cents, please. Graham now signing off. At 6 o'clock, all stations will carry Adnoid Hinkle's address to the sons and daughters of the Double Cross. Seems like the old days again, don't it? Hmm. I wonder how long they're going to last. Don't you read the papers? It is rumored that Hinkle is going to give the Jewish people back their rights. Hmm. Maybe. But you won't. Business is much better. Nobody interferes with us anymore. Now, don't that make you feel good? No, sir. The trouble, Mr. Jagel, is you're so used to bad times, you're unhappy without them. Mary! Mary! Get my Sunday shoes. You'll find them on the windowsill. All right. I can't find the shawl. Don't bother. I got the shawl. What's going on upstairs? It's Hannah. They're dressing her up to go out this evening. Is that so? She's got a ball. Who is it? The barber. Now, turn around. Oh, my dear, those hands. What's the matter with them? Those calluses, they're so rough. Maybe I better not go. Don't be foolish. He knows you do housework. Wait a minute. I get a pair of mittens from Mrs. Morris. Mrs. Morris? Yes, Mrs. Jacob. Come in. Eddie. Yeah? See if he's ready yet. All right. invasion of Austerlitz will have to be delayed. What? Epstein refuses to lend us the money. Oh. Epstein refuses, eh? Send for Schultz. Commander Schultz. Oh, Epstein refuses. It's ain't Blitzensack, Strachnitzen, Oltensack, that contemptible Epstein. What did he say? He complained of the persecution of his people and said under no circumstances would he have any dealings with a medieval maniac. He'll deal with a medieval maniac more than he thinks. First, I shall deal with his people. Your Excellency? Schultz, call out the stormtroopers. We're going to stage a little medieval entertainment in the ghetto. At such a time, Your Excellency, I think it's ill-advised. What? Demonstrations of this kind are demoralizing the whole country. Indeed. And since when have you been so concerned about the ghetto? I speak in the interests of our party and for the cause of humanity. Schultz, you need a vacation. Fresh air. A little outdoor exercise. I shall send you to a concentration camp. Guards! Place Commander Schultz under arrest. Very well, but remember my words. Your cause is doomed to failure because it's built on the stupid, ruthless persecution of innocent people. Your policy than a crime. It's a tragic blunder. Traitor! Traitor! Go to the people of the Democrats! They strafft and set down! They strafft and set down! Old sick back on! Mine are strafft and set down! I fold and set down, strut and see my own eyes and set down! Frat and set down, do it and sell of it! Schultz, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> Excellency, here are the notes for your speech. Thank you. Let's stop the sick part. I'll not need them. What I say tonight will not be directed to the sons and daughters of the Double Cross, but to the children of Israel. Ah, the 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good night. such a bad fellow after all. Most amusing. Here you are, get a hinkle button, get a hinkle button. A fine photo with a fooey on each and every button. Two. Here you are, to go on living like this. Wait a minute. We have a social call to make here. Wait a minute. What do you think you're doing? Commander Schultz gave strict orders not to molest anyone in this court. These Jews were attacking stormtroopers. I don't care what they were doing. The orders were to keep out of here. There! You saw that for yourself! I can't help it. Those are Commander Schultz's orders. Come on, let's get going. Come on. I know what is. I'm gonna get that girl. Out. Out. Ah. Smash in the door! 
are. Come on. Come on, boys. We'll give the barber a haircut. Goes the barber shop. Never mind, we can start again. We can go to Austerlitz, that's still a free country. Mr. Jekyll says it's beautiful there. Wonderful green fields, and they grow apples and grapes. Mr. Jekyll's brother's got a vineyard in Austerlitz. And when Mr. Jekyll goes there, he said he'd take me with him. Now we can all go together. It'll be wonderful living in the country. Much better than a smoky old city. And if we work hard and don't eat much, we can save money. We can buy a chicken farm. There's nice money to be made in chickens. One thing Hinkle with all his power can never touch that. It's all right now. The coast is clear. Listen, Commander Schultz escaped. He's hiding in my cellar. What? He's holding a meeting at midnight and he wants you to be there. Hannah, you two come down and help Mrs. Jacob with her supper. All right, I'll be down. claim your indulgence for a moment. We are here tonight to rid the country of a tyrant. In order to carry out this plan, one of us must die. In ancient times, the Aryan tribe of Langobardians made human sacrifice to the god Thor. At a feast by lottery, the victim was chosen. Tonight at this feast, one of you will be chosen. Each man will receive a pudding. Concealed in one of these is a coin. Whoever gets that coin must give up his life for the liberation of his people. But he will join the long line of history's noble martyrs and will rid his country of a tyrant. <coughs> I know that it is the wish of all of us to be chosen this night to die for Tumania. Much as I should like to participate in this ordeal, I cannot. Why? Don't you understand? He's too well known. Must be done by somebody like us. I can't see it like that. Uh, gentlemen, if this is a question of my honor, it's very embarrassing. Commander Schultz, I apologize for my friend. And let me say, on behalf of myself and the others, that we consider it a great privilege to die for our country. Very well, then. Gentlemen, I shall now retire until fate has chosen the liberator. Until then, hail the hate. Oh, what am I saying? Gentlemen, we have pledged our honor. Proceed.
Gentlemen, the coin is here. <coughs> What's the meaning of all this? Somebody made a fool of us. You're quite right, I did. What? I put a coin in every pudding. Mr. Jekyll, blowing up palaces and wanting to kill people. We're in enough trouble as it is. Anna's right. We've all been foolish. Our place is at home, looking after our own affairs. Good night. Good night. What's this? Good night. Good night. By the papers, they are saying Commander Schultz may be hiding in the ghetto. Here it is. Read it for yourself. Mystery still surrounds the disappearance of ex-commander Schultz. At police headquarters, it was believed that the commander may be hiding in the ghetto. A certain Jewish barber, reported to be a friend of Schultz, is also wanted for questioning. Me? Well, if it's just for questioning, it can't be serious. Meyerberg was only wanted for questioning, and we never heard of him since. Jacob, did you hear what they're saying in the papers about Commander Schultz hiding in the ghetto? Oh, I know, I know. Well, don't you think that it's serious for you if, if they find him here in the house? Shh. Don't you realize there are spies everywhere? Spies? I don't give it! What's the matter with him? Didn't you read he's wanted for questioning? Boy, where's the commander? He's in the next room. Let me tell you, if Commander Schultz is found in this house, we all go to the concentration camp for life and get our heads cut off in a bargain. Am, am I giving you an argument? Then get rid of him. You can't throw him out. Of course not. But I should like to know how long is he going to stay here. That's all. Come. Your breakfast is on the table. Mr. Man. Thank you. I have breakfast waiting at home. Take the others out of the street and search every house. Good morning. Good morning. What's wrong now? They're looking for Commander Schultz. Commander Schultz? He's supposed to be hiding in one of those houses. Oh, they're always looking for somebody. Stop 
troopers are searching every house. Quick, tell the commander. Oh. Did you tell him? Yes. What is it? But well, the stormtroopers are going to search the house. What? You better get up on the roof, quick. Both of you. Wait a minute. We can't leave all these things about. That's right. All of you, pack my valises. You pack this valise. Clear this shelf, quickly. Oh, yes. Pack this, and this. Oh, this must be found here. Open the door. They are here. Get up on the roof, quick. I'll take this. Be sure they don't leave anything behind. Uh, my god, sir. The head box. Here, take this. Come on, let's hurry. Where are you going? I'm going with him. You stay here, you'll see him later. Here, I'll meet you on this. the roof tonight. All right. Oh, take this. Don't drop the other one. Don't drop the other one. My golf clubs, not my golf clubs. And come over there, they'll see you. Quick, this way. Whoa, steady. Now be careful. Yes, sir. You were lucky you didn't break your neck. Yes, sir. Don't pardon me. Sorry. Do you guard the back? Wait a minute. I'm sorry, I shall have to bother you again. <laughs> there he is. Well, good morning. How are you? Oh, so-so. Commander Schultz, here's your friend. Remember, your silence will be appreciated. Yes, sir. Take him down to the wagon. Hey, where are you going? To the smoking room. Oh, come on, down this way.
Gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that we are at last ready to march on Austerlitz. This was made possible by the enterprise and genius of Field Marshal Herring, upon whom I shall now pin a token of my regard. Strüppet sein ulden Sack da ün, ein der Flüten, der Wiener Schnitzel. Strüppet mit sein ulden Sack da ün, ein Dull, der Flütenlager Birden. Und strüppet mit sein ulden Sack ün, ach, ich, ein und strutzen sieht, Elda Genius. Turn around. No. Gentlemen, to Field Marshal Herring, to the invasion of Austerlitz. Elephant. Napoleon has mobilized his army on the Austerlitz front. What? Already 60,000 men are on the border. He's going to take Austerlitz. I can't believe it. This ain't a strap. It's, you can't believe it. Which they struck the big boobin. Not your excellency. You let him steal a march on us. No, I didn't. Boobin, I didn't take that old sack. You can't believe it. I did everything that was... I didn't take that old sack. I didn't take that old sack. I had to down with Kovina. I said, I didn't take that old sack. I didn't take that old sack. Und stark mit seinen Schlitten sich der Bena, der Bena Blödsinn sagt, hey, der Blödsinn sagt, du den Strachstiegen, da wie Heldenblut, er mit Holle Brains, bei unten straf der Big Pin Hedden, ein Stark strutzen sich der Olden sich, hin und der Strach mit der Olden sich der eine, flutzen sich, und sagt, strutzen sich der eine, und sagt, dann flutzen 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 sich der eine, und sagt, Declare war on Napoleone. Napoleone? Yes, Napoleone. Listen, you blockhead. Mobilize every division of the army of the Air Force. Proceed to bacteria and attack at once. But war will be the end of us. Do as I tell you. Madness. Shut up! Very well, will you sign this? Yes, sir. What is it? A declaration of war. I'll sign it. A pen. Strapitz Oldensat. I'll sign it. Und Strapitz Oldensat. Il der Flutens. Und Strapitzat. A pen. I'll sign it. Napoleone. The groats of peanut. The cheesy ravioli. There. Hello? It's Napoleone. Wait a minute. Napoleone? You talk to him. What shall I say? Be nice, affable, pleasant. Hello? Well, 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 how are you? Fine. No, he, he hasn't been playing very much lately. He went round in 92, really. You want to speak to his excellency? Just now, he's a little hoarse. No, no. I mean, he can't talk. <laughs> May I take a message? He says, no doubt you've heard of the movement of his troops on the Austerlitz front, and he'd like to discuss the matter with you. Ask him to come here. His Excellency would be delighted to invite you to tell me anywhere you could discuss the matter. Very well. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Goodbye, Your Excellency. He's coming. Good. We'll give him the works. We'll put on the greatest military show the world has ever known. Convinced of my strength, Napoleone will leave the invasion of Austerlitz to me. What shall I do with this? What is it? Your declaration of war. Peace is declared. 2,975,000 eager citizens are massed in the station square, awaiting the arrival of Benzino Napoleone. Entering the station is our beloved Pui, ready to greet his distinguished guest. This historic meeting will cement a friendship that has long existed between our Fui and the dictator of Bacteria. His Excellency is about to greet the Bacterian ambassador. How do you do? Garbage. Let's see about the photography. When their excellencies meet, tell the press to see that our Fui is well photographed. Full face, not the back of his head. Yes, sir. Benzino Napoloni's private train is now coming into the station. And from a pink and white car, Napoloni and his wife will step onto a crimson hey, carpet where Adenoid Hinkle will deliver his address of welcome. Habits. 
Boots and socks. What's the matter with this old Hey, what's all of this a mix up for? Come on, they've gone too far. At ease! Bring along the car. Papa, why can't we get out here? There is an old carpet. Cares about a carpet. He'll dig it at you, me and Apollone. I never get out without a carpet. Hmm. Come on. Lay down here. Quick. Oh, it's you're... going back again. What? So what about the door? What do you do, you salami? Stop cagastro mutabi. I'll be with you in a Oh, let's get out. Let's get out while well, it's stopping. Shut up. Oh. <laughs> Take it away. Take it away. Stay here. Stay here till they've made up their mind. You got it a carpet? Well, put them down. Oh, come on, come on. Here he is. My friend. Yeah, below me. This is indeed a pleasure. Thank you. Welcome to Tomania. This way. <laughs> Pictures, Your Excellencies? Oh, sure. Salute. Another one, please. Ah, this is really a pleasure to be here, my friend Hinkle. Oh, you want another picture? Mr. Mullen. There. All right, it's all right, Mama. Where is my ambassador? Dismissed. Oh, there you are. Hello, Spook. Your Excellency. How do you feel? Good. Look after Mama. Oh, Hinky, did you meet my wife? Your wife? That's her. I... Let's go. To Mania. Very nice. Very nice. Is it two minutes or slow? This way. At all costs, Napoleon shall not invade Austerlitz. That country belongs to me. At this meeting, we shall not discuss the Austerlitz situation. This interview is solely to impress upon him the force of your personality. Oh. To make him feel your superiority. Here. Yeah. This man, Napoleon, is aggressive, domineering. Before we make our demands, we must put him in his place. Precisely, but how? By means of applied psychology. In other words, by making him feel inferior. This can be done in many subtle ways. For instance, at this interview, I have so arranged it that he will always be looking up at you. You looking down at him. At all times, his position will be inferior. Hmm. Excellent. Then again, we shall seat him here, beside your bust. So that if you relax, that will always be glaring at him. Huh? Oh. Where is he now? Resting. When he arrives, I have arranged that he shall enter from the far end of the room. Another psychological triumph. You will have the embarrassment of walking the entire length of the floor toward you. <laughs> Very good. Yes. His Excellency Signor Napoloni is now leaving his room. He's coming. He's coming. Quick. Give me a flower. A flower. Remember, at all times you must be above him before him. Entering or leaving, you must be first. Nice little man, Hinky. I'm so glad to see you again. <laughs> and my friend, the garbage. Hello. Oh, this is a lovely place. I feel fine. I just had a nice cold shower. And that bathtub, as soon as you get the plumbing fixed, it'll be in a good shape. Your Excellency, won't you sit down? Oh, shoot, shoot. Aí? 
Pinky, my dictator friend, you're... I must be a growing. My nature would have given me a baby stool. This stool is not for me. I like it a better upper stairs here. You know something, garbage? This is a lovely country. Very nice of people. I thought the public extremely enthusiastic on your arrival. Sure. They like to see new faces. I'm sorry for the mishap that occurred to Madame Napoloni at the railroad station. What's that? What's that? I'm sorry for the Napoloni that occurred at the, uh, the, uh, the, the rail... Madame Napoloni at the railway station. Oh, she's not used to public life. She can't take it. Match. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... I'm no, I thought I... Don't apologize. I'll find the one. I am simply crazy about this palace. Ivory and gold. That makes a lovely combination. Gets away from that gingerbread idea. Say, tell me something of the garbage. What's on the program? There's the grand ball this evening. Grand ball? The grand ball. And this afternoon, a review of the army. Review of the army? Well, that won't take a long. I'm afraid it will. Oh, so you've got a big army, huh? <laughs> Modesty forbids. <laughs> yeah, it seems I've heard something about it. Well, if I'm going to review the army, I think I'll get me a shave. We have a barber shop in the palace. Is that so? Hinky, you look a little blue under the gills. What do you say we take a shave together? I should be delighted. Good. Very well, this way. Ah, this is the barber shop. I got a smell of them. <laughs> Oh, now, this is a sweet, a very sweet. You like it? It was the Emperor's Library. Makes a good a barber shop. <laughs> Too old-fashioned. I want something modern. Is that so? You see, when I get shaved, I'm very nervous. I like something to look at. So I'm putting in glass walls and ceiling, so that when my head is turned this way, I shall have a view of the mountains. Ah. And when it's dipped this way, I shall have a view through the glass ceiling. What's above the ceiling? The ballroom. <clears throat> then in my summer palace, I have a barber shop. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Yes. That also has glass walls. You don't tell me. <laughs> oh, yes. With goldfish swimming inside. Wait a minute. Goldfish swimming inside of the walls? Mm -hmm. How do you feed them? You can't. They're all dead. That's why I'm building a new barbershop. Oh. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. You like it? This is the Hinkle Stadium. Before half a million spectators, the greatest display of arms the world has ever known marches by in review. Our beloved Fui and Il Digadich are seated in the reviewing stand, thrilled by this historic event. What? Nothing, I'm just chewing. Yes. Would you give us some peanut? Thank you, I've had some. Oh, good shape. There are spoke. Now passing to Mania's heavy artillery. It's all right. I want to show you my new bombing planes. I just caught up a half hour ago to start them over. Where are they coming from? Aroma? Aroma, that's 400 miles away. That's right. They should be here now. I don't know what's detaining them. Now passing to Mania's light artillery. Hmm, that's very light. And here come the armored tanks, the pride of Tomania's army. The latest design, the last word in modern warfare. Wait a minute. Where's the propellers? Hello? Sure, we're going under the water. Tanks that go under the water? Submarine work. You never heard of aerial marine tanks that go under the water and then fly up the stairs? What's that? Tanks that go under the water and fly in the air. Oh, yes. Those are obsolete now. We're concentrating on flying dreadnoughts. Flying dreadnoughts? Hmm? Hinkle's Flying Division, number 34. Up, please! You're right. They're yours. Garbage. Invasion of Austerlitz. It's all so simple. Our troops, tanks, and guns will be hidden along the border. 
To disarm suspicion, you will go hunting, duck shooting or something. At the appointed time, you will shop at the village of Pretzelberg. Meet the army, step into an automobile and cross over into Austerlitz. Herring and I will be waiting at the capital to receive you. First, Napoloni must remove his troops from the border. That question will be decided tonight. Where is Napoloni? I'll see if I can find him. In the meantime, it might be advisable for you to dance with Madame Napoloni. Huh? Well, carry weight. You mean I will carry weight? <laughs> <laughs> you find him. Let me know at once. Madame Napoloni. <laughs> Why so triste? Oh, it's just mistaken. No? May I have the pleasure of the stand? Oh, yes. Allow me. Dancing was superb, excellent, very good, good. I'm a dear Adenoid. Benzino. I've been looking for you all evening. What do you say we have a sandwich go to some quiet little place where we can sit down and talk things over, huh? As you wish. An excellent idea. Gentlemen, to the buffet. Of course, this way. Good. <laughs> 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 There's an old Tomanian proverb. Und straff mit seiner unten sich der unten seiner Flut, unten sich der eine unten seiner Flut. That's very funny. I wish I understand it. <laughs> Uh, now about the border situation. Ah, yes, yes. No problem. There oh, should be no trouble at all. Shh, not at all. What's the matter? Wait. Out. You two, out. 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 Mm -hmm. Out. Oh, as I was saying about the border question. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Just a matter of detail. Mayor formalities. <laughs> Strawberries. Pardon me, have you a English mustard? English mustard, Your Excellency. That's the hottest stuff, huh? Very hot, Your Oh, good shape, good shape. Cream. Uh, cream, Your Excellency. Now, Hickey, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to make this very simple. This is the treaty. You agree not to invade Austerlitz, I agree not to invade Austerlitz. We sign the treaty, then I remove my troops from the border. Good. In other words, when your troops are off the border, I sign. That's all right. Very good. Huh? Oh, just a minute. <laughs> You don't understand. First, we sign the treaty, then I remove the troops. Precisely, I sign when your troops are off the border. Just a minute. Hey, Spook, treaty. Hold this. Now, look. You assign this a treaty of first, then I remove the troops after. Well, what are we arguing about? You just said I remove the troops first. Well, you don't expect me to sign while your troops are there on the border. You don't expect me to remove the troops until you assign? Why not? Why should I? Why shouldn't you? Austerlitz is a free country. So? Your soldiers are there on the Austerlitz border. And they'll stay there until you assign it as a treaty. You take them off or I'll blow them off. Mm. Gentlemen, this won't get us anywhere. Stop. Stop. Your Excellency, to quote an old Latin chavain, Fluke! He's a right. Speak to him. Tom Bush, shut his up. Can't well, where's my sandwich? Well, give me another one. Can't we sit down mm. and discuss this thing I'm a guest here. Nobody talk to me and my own joint are like I that. you. Can't we sit down and discuss this thing without passion? I am not a passionate. I am a just no. that's all. I, I want to sign the treaty. I remove the troops. Can't you understand what would my people think signing such a treaty when your soldiers are there on the Austerlitz border? I will not move a soldier until you are signed. No? Not until you clear that border will I sign anything. Then my soldiers remain. Then I kick them off. Want to move from you, a hickey, and my artillery take us like this and throw you to pieces? Yes, and my aeroplanes will bomb your artillery like that! You want to start a world the war? I'll get you one! You win the world, I'll throw in the ocean! Gentlemen, Ooh. please! 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 Go! Please! 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 Please!
Excellency, we have a very important mm, decision to make. Stratzen, Sie, Herr Napoleon, da lutschen Sie. Da lutschen Sie, da lutschen Sie. Stratz, Herr Napoleon, da lutschen Sie. Hey, 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 da lutschen Put mustard on his strawberries. Mustard? <laughs> what else can you expect my dear brother Henry? Ah! 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 What's the matter? What? Ah! Ah! My little bambino! What are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Ah! 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 The bacteria! Don't mean it! You cannot kill it, the bacterium people, that's the way! I'll take the bacterium people and I'll tear them apart like that! Look, please! Look, please. Look come on, you're doing! Stop it in, stop it in, please! Don't eat the better spaghetti! It's spaghetti! He eat a side of the pretty and we have a war! Oh, listen, please! Give me a supper, quick, and give me a supper, I want to get my but it's all right, I have an appointment. What's this? I'm from the International Press. How's the conference progressing? Very successfully. How did you get in? Excuse me, will you? How did this man get in here? Deliver the regulations of the palace in regard to reporters. Go down to Captain Block. Tell him not to allow anyone else to enter the palace under any circumstances tonight. You understand? Yes, sir. Of course, there are minor details to be cleaned up. Things which I must... Excuse me, we're very busy. Gentlemen, please. The press are outside. The whole world will know that we're fighting. So what? Uh, Can't we come to some agreement? Not until I hear signs. I say nothing. Your Excellency, I must speak to you alone. You mind? Mind? I don't mind. What is it? Sign. Sign. Why should he have the advantage? What does it matter? A mere scrap of paper. The moment you sign, he'll take his troops off the board and we can move in without losing a man. I'll sign. What? All of this? Ah, oh, my little hinky. My dictator brother. I know we have no trouble. Two prisoners escaped in officer's uniforms. Officers tied up in the guard room. Sound the alarm. Two prisoners escaped. Come on. Planes are searching for us. Let's make for the woods. No, we must keep in the open. The border's that way. Invasion of Ostalich. Now or never. Did you hear that? Came from over there. Come on. Huh? Where'd you get that outfit? What? Don't answer back. <coughs> Where's your partner? Where's Schultz? You won't talk, huh? He'll talk when he gets into camp. Come on. There it is. The village of Pretzelberg. Pretzelberg? If we can pass through there, we're safe across the Osterlich border. Couldn't we go through the woods? Of course not. The woods are swarming with soldiers. They'd suspect us at once. We must face the music. If you see anyone, don't look right or left. We must bluff our way through. Remember, you're a stormtrooper. Here they come. Can you see what they're doing? They're looking this way. Well, pay no attention. Keep going. They're beginning to follow us. Shall we run? Certainly not. 
Just a little bit. Keep walking. We could walk a little faster. Hmm? Make up your mind. Perhaps we'd better slow down. No, no, keep going. There's no hurry. Come on. What is it? He's here. Hi! Hubner! Sound assembly. Change your mind and turn back? No, keep going, keep going. Hey, you think of Your Excellency will be pleased to know that everything is under control. Good. Good. I have been in continual communication with Marshal Herring in Osterwich, sir. The route ahead of us is well guarded. And at the back of us are 200 tanks, 50 armored cars, and 500 machine guns. Yes, sir. Good. Good. Are we ready to start? Yes. Yes. Gentlemen. Schultz, I'm certainly happy to see you with us again. Thank you. Where are we going? You're invading Osterlich. Schultz doing here? Pardoned, I suppose. His Excellency, Herr Garbage, Secretary of the Interior.
Corona veniat divectis. Victory shall come to the worthy. Today, democracy, liberty and equality are words to fool the people. No nation can progress with such ideas. They stand in the way of action. Therefore, we frankly abolish them. In the future, each man will serve the interest of the state with absolute obedience. Let him who refuses beware. The rights of citizenship will be taken away from all Jews and other non-Aryans. They are inferior and therefore enemies of the state. It is the duty of all true Aryans to hate and despise them. Henceforth, this nation is annexed to the Tomanian Empire and the people of this nation will obey the laws bestowed upon us by our great leader, the dictator of Tomania, the conqueror of Austerlich, the future emperor of the world. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie, they do not fulfill that promise, they never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. 
Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! <laughs> Can you hear me? Wherever you are, look up, Hannah. The clouds are lifting. The sun is breaking through. We are coming out of the darkness into the light. We are coming into a new world, a kindlier world, where men will rise above their hate, their greed and brutality. Look up, Hannah. The soul of man has been given wings. And at last, he is beginning to fly. He is flying into the rainbow, into the light of hope, into the future, the glorious future that belongs to you, to me, and to all of us. Look up, Hannah. Look up. Did you hear that? Listen. 